<laughs> so, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Carl Weaver. Uh, my Chinese name is Wee Carter. I'm a Greater China, India, and Asia Pacific wireless market mobile device spe uh, specialist. Uh, I could basically say there are three phases of my professional career. First phase, foreign exchange student learning Mandarin in Taiwan, then working in Taiwan, uh, obtaining the Chinese language uh, fluency. I uh, worked in North Taiwan and, uh, for about seven years after that in the microcomputer manufacturing industry. Fast forward, I, I came back to America, settled in Seattle. I'm originally from Massachusetts, from the Quincy, uh, Boston suburbs. Uh, so I have an East Coast accent, and uh, okay, that's kind of cool. Um, the second phase of my career here in Washington State, helping a bunch of uh, wireless technology companies open up Asian and Chinese markets. Uh, and then in 2008, the third part of my professional career, I was giving a public speaking presentation. I was working for a company called Intrinsic Software International, and I was giving a public speaking presentation about mobile WiMAX at the um, mobile at the CTIA show in Las Vegas. A company called Jamalto. I said, "Did you say Gelato?" No, they said Jamalto approached me and they said, "We need a guy who speaks Mandarin to go to China to promote near field communications." I said, "What is?" That so I'm in the mobile space, edge computing, edge devices, but I really didn't understand. This was 2008, so uh, they needed a guy who could speak Mandarin who knew the Hansen manufacturing ecosystem, which is my expertise. So I went on board in the third phase of my career. I worked in Jamalto, China, Beijing, pitching first near field communications or NFC, which doesn't mean no functional clue, uh, for uh, about two and a half years, and then they put me on this new animal called the TEE from a company called Trusted Logic, Jamalto had bought, it was a sister company from Jamalto, called the Trusted Execution Environment, or short, the TEE. I pitched that up until um, helping to scale that technology with all the chip vendors, handset manufacturers, and even the Chinese and uh, Asian MNOs, mobile network operators. I left July 2013, reinvented myself back in Seattle. Um, while I was in Seattle from 2003 until 2008, I was the top mobile technology public speaker in the state. Uh, in China, I was the top public speaker in China, uh, and I'm not even Chinese. Uh, but I am bilingual in Mandarin Chinese. This is part of my professional background and makeup. And I'm not politically correct, and really, who the hell cares? So here's the key point. I want to talk to you today about mobile device security for the blockchain. Everyone talks about crypto, cryptography on the blockchain. Yes, the blockchain has cryptography, but the devices that you're using um, need cryptography also. Fortunately, the three companies that I've worked for in the past decade are Jamalto, Trustonic, sorry, and Arm. I've worked for all three of those companies, or those are embedded solutions, hardware and software companies. All this technology does not come from America, though. I gotta tell you, this is not American technology. And I, I will say that we've fallen behind. We've fallen behind the Chinese, and it's our own fault for outsourcing lots of our uh, hardware technology to the Chinese, and of course, lots of software. So I won't discuss that in too much detail, but I've watched it as a person who's take, who takes Western technology and sells it there. I can't do my job unless I'm there. So I'm on a plane every year. Uh, every month, actually, into China. Now, today's presentation, a blockchain smartphone's secret sauce. We're adding the secret sauce for a smartphone that needs a crypto wallet in order to access the blockchain. We want to provide the security for that wallet. All right, so what we're doing is, it's decentralized security. <clears throat> it's transitioning from risk to trust. Uh, people here have been talking about trust. It is all about trust. Um, but. Think of the concept of PKA, a private key infrastructure. It's now transforming to be, because the blockchain does have cryptography, it's transforming to a, a lot safer situation in the blockchain. But of course, you need edge devices to get there. So right now, you have a single word of trust. What is the single word of trust on a smartphone today? It is the SIM card. The SIM card is not dying, it's not going away. It's here for four years. 4G is going to be here for narrowband IoT and 5G. It's not going away. But the form factor may change because of the food sounding company two weeks ago announced eSIM. Anybody hear about that announcement? That's a tectonic shift for those who understand what's really going on. So um, you have a single root of trust now. It's either the secure element, which actually goes into the SIM, right? Or it can be a separate secure element, a chip in the handset or a SIM card which has the secure element in the SIM 
or something called the TE, which I discussed, the trusted execution environment. What that is, is a security operating system that only works with something called ARM Trust Zone, which is in the mobile apps processor chip of every smartphone on the planet, because ARM owns 98% of the world's wireless IP. ARM does not make chips. Actually, Qualcomm does not make chips. The chips are all made by TSMC in Taiwan. Let me, just for your reference, a lot of, a lot of engineers have told me, you don't know what you're talking about. I know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, so what happens now is you've got a single root of trust, it's migrating and transitioning to a dual root of trust technology, which is what we're doing. This is very cool stuff. It's never been done before. It's never been done. Um, we're providing the SIM, U SIM, U means universal. Uh, the actual technical term, technical term for you, techie geeky types, is universal integrated circuit card. The SIM is actually an operating system, but they use the term to, to represent the physical hardware. The physical hardware is actually called UICC. We're combining the TE and the SIM together. Why? Because there are two there are two routes of trust on every smartphone, the SIM and the TE, right? And if you split the crypto secret in an app between both of them, then you guarantee the uh, redundancy of it. You guarantee that if somebody compromises the phone by uh, using um, SIM swapping, right, the TE is not affected. Or if you if you somehow um, use a man in the middle attack or something to get to the TE, which is really unlikely in general, you still have the SIM card. You've got two roots of trust in the same device. So let me move forward. Um, it's all about providing perm permissions and rules, though, when you're accessing the blockchain. We have enterprise controls, smart contract uh, controls, user controls. All of these controls we attach rules to in, while you're using the trusted execution in, environment in the device to access blockchain transactions and the hash and integrity hash. That's how we do it. So it is about providing permissions as you access the blockchain. For example, um, if somebody access the block, accesses the blockchain at 12 p.m. at night from Monday to Friday, that is not me. Do not allow such an activity to occur. Let me, let me move forward. We provide developer tools for the TEE. We don't make the TEE. That's made by um, Trustonic and some other, a few Chinese companies, Qualcomm, and Intel actually has the same thing, but they don't, they call it SGX. So it's a little bit different. Um, but the Intel and ARM compete. Um, we provide developer tools for this TE to pro for protections, protection of cryptographic keys and messages, uh, data assets. New business model for, uh, for the assurance and security, prob uh, probable measurable tools to meet global, this is for European requirements, blockchain powered uh, environment, it's delivering increased subscriber value, it simplifies the user experience, it's the KISS principle. Um, and supporting next generation e-commerce as well. We're working, we, we just bought a company called Disk to supply a wireless platform, a uh, wireless payment platform. Now let me go on further. What is Rivet's security architecture? What's it all about? Again, we've got developer tools, we've got third party digital asset protection and services. We have our own platform, a wireless platform for this technology. But if you're an apps developer right now, what's cool is you can get our developer tools from GitHub by just signing an NDA. Right now, it's not uh, commercially launched yet, but if you sign an NDA letter of intent, you can get access and you can experiment through GitHub with our, with our developer tools. We're, again, as I, and as I said, we're pioneering uh, the dual independent roots of trust on a smartphone uh, with dual private key verification, authentication, attestation, encryption. It's really cool stuff what we're doing. Let me, let me move further. Now uh, this is kind of cool, and you're not going to find this too many places because I put the stamp thing together myself because I've been in this ecosystem. There are, so please understand, every mobile device that accesses the internet is going to have a SIM operating system. The form factor may change from USIM to eSIM to something called iSIM, that's from Qualcomm and um, arm right but let's not talk about that right now i'll talk a little bit about it but not 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 for your it's not important right now what's important is to understand that the euicc operating system goes into these mobile devices the eu i the euicc operating system has physical hardware and tamper resistant hardware so it's an operating system that requires tamper resistant hardware to provide the security on these smartphones tablets 
smartwatches, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The first way that you can do it is Apple Pay has an NFC controller chip, right? Well, you can actually have a plug-in for the EUICC in the chip itself. You can have a plug-in right into the controller chip. This is not, this is a, a standalone connectivity chip for NFC, near field communications. Not, not no functional proof, near field communications. It's on every single smartphone that does Apple Pay and Android Pay, which basically means most of the smartphones in the world in order to do mobile payment. The second type here is what we're, what we're using. It's called the trusted execution environment. But in China, they've done something kind of funky. They've taken a regular UICC operating system, not an EUICC operating system, a regular UICC operating system, and they put that into the TE as what we call a TE SIM, or another term is a virtual SIM. No physical SIM, but a virtual SIM running, because the TE has power, running inside of the trusted execution environment in the mobile apps process chip, in ARM's trust zone. I know this is, I, I, I don't want to lose you. If you've got questions, just a moment, you can ask. The third part is a, is a, regular, a regular removable SIM card, but with the EUICC operating system, that's called the embedded UICC operating system. It's still removable, but it's, it, it includes the EUICC, which is important, I'll explain why in a minute. The other one is this thing, this new thing called eSIM. It's actually a module. It's a module that's surface mounted onto the uh, PCB of the device, smartphone, car, watch. It's embedded, and it also has the EU, EUICC operating system. The EUICC operating system is nothing but a physical storage for the EUICC, um, well, it's, the EUICC module encompasses the EUICC operating system. The EUICC operating system works with the GSMA's Remote SIM Provisioning Program, which is ultra critical, and I know very few of you have ever heard about this. This is paramount. It's paramount that you understand this stuff because the operators are trying to keep this technology from the consumers around the world. We won't let that happen. The final one here is the Qualcomm is pitching something in the chips called SPU, Secure Processing Unit. What is that? Uh, it's basically, ARM is pushing for the same thing. It's called Crypto Island. It's called um, the PSA, their PSA, their Platform Security Architecture. It's basically taking that same operating system, the SIM operating system, and not putting it here in, the, in a firewall, but putting it actually someplace else more secure directly into the chip that the, ha that the operators cannot get access to. The handset makers can, but not the operators. So see, the operators don't like this. The operators don't like that. The operators don't care about that. The operators like these things. Apple is, has put this into their new, their three new phones, and they've uh, added support for the remote SIM provisioning program from MVNOs like Gig Sky. It's very cool. Um, so that's basically how you take the operating system and you embed it into the hardware, into device hardware. It's, it's actually rather, rather important. Now, the Rivets Network is our wireless platform for the services that we're going to provide uh, into the market. We have developer tools. You see this is our toolkit. It's all Java, uh, Java OS, uh, Java, um, Java based. Um, we call it our Rivet, Rivets Registor, or Rivets network at the store. That's basically it. It's not ready yet. We're working on it. Now, decentralized security is kind of interesting because we're enabling a new business model of shared control between the TEE, which is shared by anybody who can get access to the developer tools and write their app to protect their, their application inside the TEE, but also the operators who, who owns, let me ask you a question. So who owns the SIM card? Who actually owns the SIM card? Who makes the SIM card? The SIM card is owned by the operators, but the operators don't make the SIM card. It's made by companies like Jumalto, Obetor, G&D. These are European companies that actually are the highest in the food chain for this, these uh, SIM cards. You have a question? You sure? Oh, okay. So, What's very cool is we're providing two dual routes of trust and we're securing it with the SIM card for half the crypto secret and the TEE for the other half of the crypto secret. And your phones right now, if you bought your phone after 2009, 
your phone has the TEE, and of course all phones use the SIM card, the USIM. Uh, if you have a Pixel 2 phone from Google, which is actually made by HTC in Taiwan, um, that Google phone also has an embedded SIM, but Apple really is a paradigm. Apple was introduced to the, the three new phones. It's kind of like a paradigm shift because the operators are going, oh, oh shoot, what are we going to do now because Apple's introduced it. It means that you now, from your smartphone, you can program the profile from your phone. You don't need to go to the operator's store anymore. Is that cool or what? Is this deer in the headlights? Nobody's ever heard of this? Deer in the headlights. Well, it's kind of important because we will also support the eSIM. We can support the eSIM and the eSIM for this, this dual roots of trust. Let me continue. It, let me stop for a second. You're moving really fast. Yeah, it is fast. So what you're saying is is that I'm, I've, I've got my crypto hash, right? I've got half of it stored on my SIM, in the, in the memory of the SIM card. You're, you're, you're essentially storing that data, we'll just say 50-50, whatever the split is doesn't really matter. It's 50-50. 50-50. Honorable um, split. Um, between the SIM card and the actual, ch in, in, inside the, the security, at, the, the security. Firewall area, of the chip. Yeah, the firewall areas of the chip. All right, so that's great. And I get that I've, I've, I've been following these SIMs for a long time. My question is, my, my question is, so I, you know, today we're, at, we're on physical, physical SIMs, right? So I've got T-Mobile, I pop my T-Mobile chip out because I've got an unlocked phone. I go over to, you know, I go throw in an orange chip because I'm in, I'm in France. I just broke this, right? No, not now, not, not currently. Well, you just removed the SIM card. Uh, oh, you mean our technology? Yes, I just broke it. Unless we sign a deal with Orange France, you've okay. broken it. Okay, which is fine. So in other words, it, the, the because I'm, I'm 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 trying to pull this into, you know, the, the the equivalent of a security key, right? The the Google security key or some of the other ones that that, that are out there, right? So I've got it. That's different. That's what I, we call two-factor authentication. I, but there's a little bit of two-factor on this too, except in the eSIM environment. The physical SIM is storing half the data. Yes. Right. So if that SIM goes away, no access. So you're right. Okay. I just I wanted to make sure I see to that. I'm actually got a video showing that. So okay. you're absolutely correct. I'm glad that you're following that. Very cool. Um, yeah. So basically, uh, the, we're providing decentralized security that actually an apps developer can utilize because we're launching the technology with Telefonica. Uh, February 2019, Barcelona, Mobile World Congress. We're launching this technology, technology with Barcelona. We've already got a second um, Dutch carrier that wants to jump on board. Hell, once all these other operators say what we're actually doing, with that we can help them to become less of a dumb pipe, they will all jump on board. But we have to prove the proof of concept. Uh, and this technology is being worked on right now in Telefonica's labs in Miami, Florida. But to the auspices of, of Telefonica for, uh, Spain. So it's very, very cool. Uh, I'll move forward. It's all about introducing dual roots of trust. And you can see that there's a non-trusted world and then there's a trusted world. We're allowing any developer who wants to get access to our tools to be able to take the, their wallet or any other app that they want, put it inside of the TE to use, um, and basically you don't have to have the dual roots of trust. You can just use the developer tools as they exist right now, take your crypto wallet, put it inside the TEE right now, and still have better security than if it was on the open operating system or the, or the RTOS, uh, real-time operating system of the smartphone. Right now, right now. So it amazes me why software developers don't take advantage of this, because we don't charge at this point in time to use our developer tools. We've got lots of companies using our developer tools, even though we haven't officially launched it. We've got companies going to GitHub and using our tools right now. Um, let me go for, forward. Basically, in, your, in an assured instruction environment, you've got a known user, known device, and known condition uh, providing assured instruction. That's what the trusted computing technology is all about. The TE comes from uh, it's an offshoot of the trusted computing module, the trusted computing group. This was started about 15 years ago um, with my CEO's participation. And one of the bigger companies that was involved was Microsoft. But Microsoft has fallen off the track on mobile devices. 
but Microsoft is still very big with um, uh, notebooks and, and laptops. Microsoft cares very much about security now and about this technology. And so the technology's in laptops, but developers aren't using it. The technology is in Android smartphones right now, but again, developers aren't using it because, well, it's about embedded software into hardware. Okay, so it's a little bit more complex, but it's not that difficult. Global Platform is the organization that standardizes the secure element and the TEE. Global Platform is a global organization, um, and that's basically handling all the standards for this technology. We're just using the TEE. We don't make the TEE where our developer tools use it, and then we, we're an ICO. We're an ICO uh, as of 2017, and we have our own crypto wallet and token to access the blockchain. So that's how we make our money, through our token accessing the blockchain. But you don't have to use our token, but if you want to, it's there. We can also protect your crypto wallet. Um, I, this is basically it, and you, you hit it on the noggin. It's basically, it's, a, it's, an, it's an app, and half of the crypto secret is shared between something that's already resident in the device and something that's kind of, you have to buy or it's removable. But this is actually not removable, that's the eSIM. So we haven't started to talk to them about eSIM yet because there's only two devices in the world, uh, two companies in the world that have launched it, but eventually we will talk about it. For us, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. It's just the app embedding it here or there. This is removable, this is not removable. It's this, uh, but it is important that uh, once it's non-removable, this is very, very secure technology. It's usually something we call uh, SMSR and SMDP. Um, and those are basically the, ser the server and, and security layers from the SIM card to the server, to the server to the SIM card. Um, let me move forward. Uh, basically, you can see the eSIM, the TE and the eSIM communicates currently with, it, it's a GP standard. We're, using, we're, work, we're providing for Seek, binary, uh, SMS, and others. I'll move forward. Uh, I like to put pictures in some of my slides. Uh, decentralized security. So that's why I say, you know, the Chinese may or may not love this, but it's, a, it's imperative that I get this to the Chinese. You know why? All the smartphones in the world are made in China. And I'm working with HTC, just got a meeting finally after a month and a half, pushing them to, to, to look at our technology. I just got a meeting with them in Beijing last week. Huawei and Lenovo. Lenovo owns the Motorola brand. Motorola doesn't make cell phones anymore. It's owned by Lenovo, another Chinese company. And it, of course, everybody knows the infamous Huawei. When, by the way, the way you pronounce it is Hua, Huawei, Huawei. I've seen it bastardized even by Huawei employees in the West. And then of course, HTC. HTC is a really interesting company with really good design technology. Um, so my job is to work with them to design this technology into their smartphones. Um, so it is state-of-the-art protection for identity, blockchain applications, messaging, IoT. I mean, we're not just a blockchain enabler, enabler. We're an enabler for any mobile device because all of this technology is based on what? It's based on ARM. It's based on also Jamalto. We're working with Jamalto and we have their SDK to work for Telefonica, okay? Multiple trust authorities assure provable trust, enabling GDPR controls. Um, blockchain delivered control. Again, we can. We have many capabilities. We can encrypt, decrypt biometrics, thumbprint, um, a secure pins, key storage, secure display. We call that the TUI, the Trusted User Interface Secure Display, um, and mobile wallets, chat. We have also our own chat app now. It's called Chatter. So we've got our own chat app. I haven't talked about that as much. Um, we've got, we're, we're providing storage, uh, security for storage and cloud authentication from the device. We're all about edge devices. Let me move forward. I don't want to lose you. I don't want you to fall asleep either, okay? Um, uh, so our network is compliant with lots of these, with the global platform standard. This is the, the, the eSIM module is called the MFF2 form factor. That's a regular SIM from eSIM, and that's a secure element. These are, might be things you've not heard about or used before. 
They're relevant if you want security when you're accessing the blockchain. And we have our own token, we call it Ribbit. I've got, I've got a smartphone showing this. Uh, and then we have our own applet, which is, s distributes independently 50% the crypto key uh, for the TE and the, and the same. Uh, I threw this in there because this is more my involvement. Um, so around the beginning of this year, we started to see these funky, not really high-end smartphones come out claiming to be blockchain enabled. I'm not so sure. Uh, but Lenovo basically is, uh, has announced something, Huawei has announced something in HTC. HTC might release um, a smartphone in October. We hope that they hold off on that announcement because they want to sell it in the open operating system without an operator. I, I can't imagine how they could be more successful than working with us because we'll give them the direct connection to Telefonica, the world's third largest mobile network operator. So uh, that's what you see going on there. It's kind of cool. And this is our announcement. Um, we announced this in May, and then, I st and then I've, I've given four or five presentations in China, most of them in Mandarin, some in English, on our announcement that we're working with Telefonica. So this is a major, major thing. Uh, that's my background. And now I'd like to show you a video. Why not? No popcorn, but it doesn't matter. Here we go. Yes, yeah, there's the photo. Two videos. So this is the first one. Hope you like it. One of the most critical issues we find today is finding a balance between security and usability. At Rivets, we provide decentralized security that requires no compromises or sacrifices. It's simple, it's built in. We protect the consumer, enterprise, and carrier information. We verify the intent of all transactions, utilizing blockchain and trusted computing technology, which is available on millions of mobile devices today. A root of trust is a secure capability in the hardware of your device. It repeatedly performs trustworthy operations. In most mobile devices today, there are two roots. There's a SIM, which is controlled by the carrier, and a secure chipset, which executes the trusted execution environment, or the TEE. With two roots of trust, we distribute the keys across two trusted environments, the TEE and the SIM. If one of those environments were to fail or succumb to an attack, we would still need to compromise the other portion of the key in the other secure environment to steal information or other data. If your phone is out of your control, we can guarantee that your information is appropriately protected. We enable carriers to deny access to protected apps in the event that a device is lost or stolen. If that device is recovered, reactivating the access is a simple interaction with the carrier. Many employees today use their own devices at work. Employees can use company apps and access company data. Utilizing Dorgan's technology, it's possible for an enterprise to assert their digital rights. For example, if an employee is terminated, the organization can ensure that that employee can no longer access any corporate information. When using dual roots of trust, a key is created when the Rivets enabled app is installed. This key to the application is cryptographically distributed between the TEE and the SIM. The app will alert the user by noting, split keys created, meaning a portion of the key has been sent to the SIM and another portion to the TEE. Without both portions of the key, no one will be able to break through the app security. Let's pretend the text here is your secret and you want to protect it. With both portions of the key present, you can encrypt and decrypt it as many times as you want, no problem. Now let's say you lose your phone and tell your carrier to revoke access to your phone by deactivating the SIM. Now, when I try to decrypt the message, the app says, no secure element present, and I am unable to encrypt or decrypt the message. For the dual roots of trust system to work, you're already you in the TE now, the so the they, the hackers can't get you in already. And the SIM but now you're both available. Just splitting the phone. So once I replace the SIM card and add both the roots of trust, the system will work again. Once the SIM card is activated, we have our secret back. Is that cool or what? I got one more video. And guess what? There's no other company in the world doing this. So that's pretty damn interesting, I think. So, quick question. Yes. The because this is tied to the to the SIM. Two-factor authentication. Let me just talk yeah, about no, 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 go ahead. I'll ask afterwards. And you go, yeah, go ahead. Right. Additional method of logging in with a username and password is no longer sufficient to protect your online accounts from banking, 
social media, and email. Passwords are easily forgotten and stolen. Two-factor authentication is integral to protecting your identity and online account access. If your phone is lost or stolen, regaining access to your 2FA-enabled accounts can be incredibly difficult, time-consuming, or even impossible. Rivets Authenticator is the solution. Rivets Authenticator is the first 2FA solution to offer backup and recovery of your 2FA keys using your phone's existing hardware security capabilities. You also retain complete control over your encrypted backup files. Rivets Authenticator generates 2FA codes in your phone's secure hardware chipset, protecting them from the operating system and potential malware. Other 2FA apps generate the codes and software, exposing them phishing attacks, and other threats. This secure hardware chipset is called the Trusted Execution Environment, also known as the T, and is already embedded in millions of Android devices. Rivets Authenticator is built from the ground up using hardware-based trusted processing. Rivets Authenticator is compatible with your favorite online services, Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, Coinbase, and more. Your services are easy to add. Enter them manually or use a QR. Rivets Authenticator monitors the state of your device for changes caused by spyware or other malicious software. We'll notify you if your device state changes. You can save all your services as an encrypted backup so they can be recovered in case your device is lost or stolen. Your backup is secure with the 12 or 24 word recovery phrase. It's easy to restore access to your services. Simply open your backup and enter your recovery phrase. The app also functions completely offline, within your device, so we never see your keys, codes, or even backups. And, and another cool thing is, we provide this access to all of your devices. So if you have two smartphones, a tablet, we, can we do provide the capability that if you've lost one phone, the backup keys, your crypto keys, are also accessible from all these other devices, because they're kind of mirroring all the, mirroring all the other devices as well. So you cannot, we do not, cannot stop people from stealing phones, but we can surely protect the cryptocurrency the, you know, that's in the phone.